My friend is raising money to build an orphanage in his home country. He will be hosting an auction fundraiser and asked our friends if they had anything they could donate. I had an engagement ring that is very beautiful, but holds painful memories for me. My ex and I broke up three years ago. I've contacted him multiple times in the past, asking him to either take it, give me his new address so I can send it to him, or agree to be selling it. He hasn't responded to any of these requests. So after three years, I finally decided to get rid of it by donating it to the fundraiser. I sent my ex one final warning that I would get rid of the thing, which he ignored. So I gave it to my friend. I even sent my ex a confirmation text to let him know that I no longer had the ring. This was a few weeks ago and he never responded. On Saturday, he showed up at my home looking furious. I was shocked to see him and I kept asking him who had given him my address. This annoyed him more because he told me that was a stupid question and demanded I give him the ring. I explained that I no longer had the ring and that I had given him plenty of opportunities to collect it over the last three years. He told me to get it back and I told him I couldn't. He asked me if I had any idea how much that ring was worth and reminded me it was his grandmother's. I told him if the ring was so important to him that he should have responded to my messages or came to collect it since he knew where I lived. He told me that he gave it to me because it was so important, but if he had known I would be so spiteful to give it away, he would have come back for it. We kept arguing, and he told me I would regret if I didn't get the ring back to him by the end of the week. I told him if he wanted it back so badly, he should bid on it because it was too late. He eventually left after telling me I had a week to get the ring back, or else. Obviously, he thinks I'm an idiot, and after speaking to my sister, he might be right, but I gave him plenty of opportunities to take the ring back, and if it were that important to him, he would've. He also can 100% afford to bid and win it back, so I don't feel as bad about refusing to ask for it back, since his money will go to a worthy cause. Am I the idiot? You gave him three years, and he responded immediately after you said it was gone? Meaning he was reading the messages, and just deciding not to respond, LMAO. No, you're not the idiot. If he cared, he would have gotten it immediately. Can we also acknowledge he has had to stalk her or do some digging to find out where she now lives? Then to make threats? I'd honestly, number one, find a lawyer. Number two, contact the police if the lawyer agrees. Cause this is all scary info, OP. Make sure you get some cameras installed ASAP as well. Not the idiot. This man had 1,000 days to get the ring back. He dropped the ball. And now he's panicking? Not your circus, not your problem. Also, why is he threatening you? If you're worried, I'd report that to the authorities. However, I've had clients charged with uttering threats for much less. I don't think he dropped the ball. I think it was deliberate. He felt that for as long as she had his ring in her possession, she would have an unbreakable string of connection to him. That's why he ignored her generous messages. He thought he could extend that connection into infinity and that she'd never really been free of him. He's mad that she proved him wrong. Again, it's a control thing. Not the idiot. How much longer were you supposed to hold on to the ring? Another three years? Five years? Ten? You told him exactly what would happen, and now he gets to live with those consequences. The fact that it's now suddenly important to him, and your problem, is in fact not your problem at all. Have fun watching that auction. You need to check the laws in your jurisdiction to see how engagement rings are considered. The last thing you need for him is to sue you or try to go after the charity and cause their legal expenses. I was fully prepared to say you are the idiot, but you did try to get him to respond. Make sure legally that is enough. Good luck. I'll preface this by saying that my 45, son Tim, 23, recently got married to his now wife, Sarah, 22. We get along just fine as a family. However, she tends to act passive aggressively sometimes. She loves food and is always open to trying my cooking. She said my cooking was amazing, though she made few negative comments about certain meals and advised me to use XYZ ingredients next time. I invited them over for Thanksgiving yesterday. The whole family was there. The bell rang and I opened the door to see Tim and Sarah. Sarah was carrying what seemed to be a container. I didn't ask about it nor paid much attention to it. Everyone sat down to eat after I set up the table and dinner on it. 
My main dish was the traditional Thanksgiving dish every family in our community knows. It had appetizers and side dishes and, of course, salad and dessert. Sarah then put the container on the table and started unloading food onto her empty plate. Everyone was watching as my eyes widened up. I asked what she was doing, and she said she brought her food to eat since she wouldn't eat what I cooked. I was stunned. I politely asked if there was a reason for that, and she shook her head. I asked if she was vegan. She said no. I asked if she was allergic to anything at the table, and she said no. I asked if she had an upset stomach or anything, but she said no. I asked, why not eat what I cooked for them all day? She just smugly smiled at me, which set me off. I told her that it was disrespectful to bring food to the Thanksgiving dinner that I was hosting. She started arguing that she gets to eat whatever she wants whenever she wants. I said it's about basic respect and decency. Tim asked her to at least try some of the dishes I prepared, but she lashed out, telling him that he and I were unbelievable by deciding what she should eat and forcing her to take it. I said it wasn't like that, but she got up and said she didn't appreciate how I insulted her for simply not wanting to eat my food. She grabbed her stuff, excused herself, and walked out. Tim quietly followed her, and they left. I was so upset. Everyone was just staring. My husband said I should have just let it go and not comment on Sarah's food choice, but I couldn't help but feel disrespected in my own home. He said I made dinner awkward by focusing so much honestly. Tim texted me in the morning apologizing, but said I should talk to Sarah to clear the confusion. But I'm not sure if there was any confusion. She chose to bring food to my house after I cooked especially for her and the others. Not the idiot. I'd feel disrespected too. Wow. OP, this wasn't about the food. It was never about the food. The smug smile said it all. You didn't take her cooking suggestions, so she decided to show out at Thanksgiving, and her plan to show you up blew up in her face. You have nothing to apologize for. She was asserting herself and trying to humiliate you in front of your family and guest. Not the idiot because she could have respectfully called you or pulled you to the side and let you know that she appreciated the effort you put in, but she honestly felt more comfortable eating her food. Cooking for multiple people is highly stressful, so a little bit of gratitude would have been the nice thing to do. I'm sorry, but even that isn't polite. What is wrong with people these days? When you are invited to dinner, you don't bring your own food. You eat or pretend to eat what you're served, absent a dietary or religious restriction, it will not kill people not to have their perfect meal for one dinner party. You are the idiot. Since she has eaten your food before, it's odd that she brought her own food, but she may have some reason she isn't comfortable telling you. She doesn't owe you her medical information. When we went through fertility treatments, my doctor encouraged me to be careful about food poisoning, much more than most people consider necessary. It was the same when I went through cancer treatment. You are the one who kept pushing the issue, drawing attention to it, and spoiling the meal. She didn't say anything critical of your cooking or your meal. You started the fight, and they left instead of dealing with your behavior. You put your pride over spending time with your son and his wife. I, 24 female, am expecting my first child, and the event brought up some issues between my parents and me. When I was little, my parents divorced. They still got along okay, but didn't want to be together anymore, and worked on co-parenting, and making things easier for my older brother and me. It was better than some of my friends had, but it was still hard. I mourned the family life I had enjoyed before. I missed having one home where both parents live and where we were a family, not two families with different kids in one and a new person who is considered your parent by everyone but you, where it's weird because everyone thinks them getting along makes it so that there was no struggling but then people think you fall madly in love with the nice person your parent marries and readily accept that new person in a parent's position. They think it makes jumping between homes easier. It does somewhat. If we forgot something at mom or dad's, the other would bring us to pick it up with no drama. But I used to long for the days where I had a home. When my brother was 17 and coming up on graduation, my parents told him all four parents would attend the graduation dinner for graduating kid and parents. He told them no because he only had two parents. Only mom and dad could go. They said he had four, that the steps were just as good parents, and he told them no. The relationship changed after that. It was only with me becoming a mom they expected me to side with them over what had happened, 
and for me to say everything was perfect with the divorce. I told them it wasn't, that the divorce was hard on me, despite how well they got along, that I was so happy they were happy and had better lives now. But divorce is always going to be something to adjust to for a kid, regardless of circumstances, and they can't keep forcing us to say otherwise. They called me childish, and we haven't spoken since. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot. You are allowed to feel how you feel, regardless of how it makes them feel. But of course, you aren't wrong for having feelings. Granted, it may have been a lot worse for you if they tried to stay together and just fought and had a bad home life instead. You may well be better off, but that doesn't mean you can't miss the home you had. You are the idiot. You are allowed to say it was hard on you. But this is a rant about how they ruined your happy childhood, which, guess what? Probably would have been miserable if they stayed together when they weren't happy. I'm older than you, with parents that have been together 40 plus years and are still happy together. And guess what? Still, there were challenges that I was way more aware of the older I got. Please, 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 please. If you and your husband realize you aren't right together, don't stay together for your child. I, 48 male, dated a woman, 47 female, about three years ago for about eight months before she decided she wasn't really into me and broke it off. I'll admit I took it really badly when she dumped me. We've both been pretty unlucky in love during our lives and I had no idea if we would make it long term, but I definitely thought our relationship had plenty of legs and wasn't going away anytime soon when she ended up dumping me out of the blue over text one day. I wish I could say that I just bowed out gracefully, but I didn't. It hit me extremely hard for some reason. I texted and called way too much for about two weeks afterward, just trying to understand what happened. Part of what affected me so badly was that I connected with her three kids so well and was going to miss them. But eventually I came to accept the situation and I moved on with my life. Anyway, her oldest daughter, 24 I think, somewhere around there anyway, recently opened up a deli in our town with her partner, who she was dating even back when I was seeing her mom. Last week, I decided to go try the place out on my lunch break. When I got there, my ex-girlfriend's daughter was working the counter. It was fairly busy, but not packed. When I came up to the counter to place my order, I greeted her and said, well, hi, let's call her Rachel. How have you been? She coldly responded, fine, what can I get you? I realized then that she wasn't enthused to see me, probably because of the way that I acted after her mom dumped me. I ordered a Reuben sandwich with salt and vinegar chips. It took about 10 minutes for my order to come. And when it did, Rachel's girlfriend just sort of dumped it on a counter and said, here. I just said thanks and left a few bucks as a tip and took my food back to my work. When I arrived there, I found that there was hardly any sauerkraut on the sandwich, zero thousand island dressing that it was supposed to have, and about five to six potato chips. The bread was also barely grilled. It was a garbage order, and I felt as if it was intentional. So I went on to Yelp and left only two stars and said that the food and service I'd received was subpar, which was absolutely true. About a day later, I got a text from my ex-girlfriend telling me that I was being petty, that I was just taking out the fact that we hadn't worked out on her daughter and that she was trying to get a new business off the ground and that my bad review was hurting her. I told her that my review was only about the food and service I'd received and had nothing to do with her, and that one bad review can't sink a business. But given the nature of everything, maybe I should have never gone into my ex-girlfriend's daughter's deli to begin with. Am I the idiot? You are the idiot. What you did was inappropriate, and you didn't even provide context to the reviewers, which would indicate exactly why you got a thrown together sandwich. Did you provide the full context in your negative review? That is, did you say that you used to date the owner's mother for eight months, took it horribly when she broke up with you because you really connected with her kids for eight months and harassed her for two weeks? Not the idiot. It's not entirely unreasonable to expect at least to exchange a hello while you support her business. You didn't go in intending to sabotage her. She treated you sort of shockingly by messing up your sandwich and it must have stung. A two-star Yelp review seems like the natural consequence one would expect after serving someone a spite sandwich. Maybe you could have left brief context and it would have been a saintly high road to not review it at all. 
or give the benefit of the doubt that maybe they're just a legitimately low-quality deli to everyone. Not the idiot. Honestly, all the info about you dating this person's mom and how it went, etc. is irrelevant. You went to a deli, got poor service and poorly made food, and wrote a review that reflected that. I don't see any issues here. If she didn't want a bad review, then she shouldn't have treated a customer poorly. I'm not a vegetarian in case there's a misunderstanding, but I love eating vegetables. They're delicious, in my opinion, and I go in every way I can to taste any vegetarian food. I'm also a meat eater, but eating meat just doesn't give me the same satisfaction as vegetarian foods. So here's the thing. My roommate, also my friend, but we're not that close, is a huge meat eater, and I don't mind. He can't cook because of his fear of fire, which I understand, and have agreed to be the one to make our meals. I don't mind this because I love cooking. He hates it when I cook vegetables on the same cooking tools, because apparently, the taste sticks on the meat after making vegetarian food. So I also accommodated this and bought two cooking utensils, one for me to be cooked and one for me to make vegetarian food. Earlier in the morning, I woke up and didn't realize I used the tools that were supposed to be for meat. So I went ahead and made my breakfast, which of course, vegetarian. By the time my roommate woke up, I was already done making my breakfast and finished making his breakfast. When he ate his, he asked what tool I used and I realized I used the same tool to make my breakfast. I apologized right away, but he threw the food I made for him. My poor hard work, which many also threw the plate and it broke, I bought it and told me he had lost his appetite and couldn't believe I used the same tool to make his food and that he doesn't want to eat anything made by stupid plants. It honestly hurt me and I just cried. He wouldn't talk to me at all and went home to cool off and his dad scolded me and told me I was awful to his son. Am I the idiot? Your roommate threw a tantrum and tossed a plate of food you cooked him because there was contamination of some vegetables? Then he sulked and went to complain to his father, who also blamed you? What am I reading here? Are you their servant? Is he a child you're being paid to spoil? You need to stop catering to and cooking for this ungrateful roommate. He does not deserve your kindness. Not the idiot. Firstly, stop cooking for him. Completely. He has to learn to look after himself. You were extremely kind by feeding him, and he doesn't appreciate it and treats you like a slave. This is not a normal roommate relationship. Also, getting his dad involved? Can he not stand up for himself? You're under no obligation to do anything his dad says. Secondly, take back all of your cooking utensils, cutlery, crockery, pans. They've all been contaminated by vegetables, so you can tell him you're doing him a favor.